what are near-Earth asteroids and potentially hazardous objects? Welcome. Today we embark on a fascinating voyage to explore the realm of near-Earth asteroids, or NEAs, and potentially hazardous objects, PHOs. What are near-Earth objects? These celestial bodies primarily asteroids or comets, having orbits that bring them close to Earth within 1.3 astronomical units of the Sun, one astronomical unit being the distance between the Sun and the Earth. Why are they important? Understanding near-Earth near objects helps us assess potential threats and plan for planetary defence while also uncovering clues about the formation of our solar system. Unveiling the Near-Earth Object Zoo Meet the NEO family. Aten asteroids cross Earth's orbit and have orbits entirely within Earth's orbit of the Sun. Apollo asteroids cross Earth's orbit but have larger orbits overall, like cosmic tourists. And more or asteroids have orbits that brush past Earth's but stay mainly outside, like cosmic neighbours. Atire asteroids orbit entirely within Earth's orbit. Let's take a closer look at these categories. And more asteroids. And more asteroids orbit outside the Earth's orbit. Their orbits can take them out as far as Mars, but their return journey back towards the Sun can bring them very close to Earth's orbit. Apollo asteroids are also potentially hazardous objects. Apollo asteroids orbit inside Earth's orbit but have a larger orbit than the Aten asteroids. The larger orbits of the Apollos means they cross the Earth's orbit more often making them potentially hazardous objects. Aten asteroids also potentially hazardous objects. These have smaller orbits within Earth's orbit than Apollo asteroids. Some Aten orbits come very close to Earth and can cross the Earth's orbits, making the, them potentially hazardous objects, PHOs. Attires, a subgroup of Atens. These orbit inside Earth's orbit of the Sun, but some do come close to breaching the orbit of Earth. This is NASA's interactive app called Eyes on Asteroids. It shows a great many asteroids that are near to Earth, but not all of them. You can actually play around with it. You can zoom in and zoom out, and you can also see the names of some of the bigger objects that come near to Earth, including comets. How many near-Earth objects are out there? Over 32,000 near-Earth objects have been discovered, and the number keeps growing as our detection capabilities improve. Size matters. Most near-Earth objects are small, less than one kilometre in diameter. But some are giants. The largest known near-Earth object, Pallas, is 500 kilometres wide. Potentially hazardous objects, the potential peril. Not all near-Earth objects are created equal. A subset, known as potentially hazardous objects or PHOs, deserve our attention. What makes a PHO? There are two key criteria. Close calls. Minimum orbit intersection distance, MOID, 
with Earth of less than 0 0.05 astronomical units. That's about 7.5 million kilometers. Big enough to matter. Absolute magnitude of 22 or brighter, roughly corresponding to a size greater than 140 meters. The thrill of the chase, identifying near-Earth objects. Telescopes. Powerful ground and space telescopes scan the skies for near-Earth objects, like cosmic detectives. Radar. Bounces radio waves off of near-Earth objects to reveal their size and shape, like a sort of ultrasound. Infrared surveys detect near-Earth objects that emit heat, like cosmic fireflies. How dangerous are potentially hazardous objects? The good news. No known potentially hazardous objects pose an immediate threat to Earth in the next 100 years. But vigilance is the key. We constantly monitor and refine our understanding of potentially hazardous objects to improve our predictions. Impact Scenarios Scientists study various impact scenarios to assess potential consequences and develop mitigation strategies. Planetary Defense Protecting our home planet Space agencies like NASA are on guard. Dedicated programs like the Planetary Defense Coordination Office track potentially hazardous objects and develop deflection methods. Kinetic impactors colliding a spacecraft with a potentially hazardous object to water its trajectory. Gravity tractors Using a spacecraft's gravitational pull to slowly tug the potentially hazardous object off course. Nuclear devices, a last resort option for deflecting very large and dangerous asteroids. But this could actually make one large asteroid into many smaller problems. This map shows the countries around the world that have signed up to the International Asteroid Warning Network as of February 2023. So why do we need to take precautions against these potentially hazardous objects? We have had some very near misses, the largest being a Tugunska in Russia. For Tsuzinska was the size 10 megaton impacts. The estimate range from one event every two to three thousand years to one event every three hundred years. This event was a uh, airburst that actually flattened miles and miles of forest and woodlands. It was reported that only possibly one casualty who was actually thrown against a tree and died. The second largest observed event after the Tunguska meteor was a 1.1 megaton airburst in 1963 near the Prince Edward Islands between South Africa and Antarctica, which was detected only by infrasound sensors. However, this may not have been a meteor. The third largest but by far observed impact was the Chelyabinsk meteor again in Russia on February the 15th 2013. A previously unknown 20 meter or that 66 foot asteroid exploded above this Russian city with an equivalent burst yield of 400 to 500 kilotons. The calculated orbit of the pre-impact asteroid is similar to that of Apollo asteroid 2011 EO40, making the latter the meteor's possible parent body. 
This map shows reported boloid events between 1994 and 2013, a period of 10 years, and I, yes, I know it's a bit old, uh, which shows small asteroids that disintegrated in the Earth's atmosphere all around the world. The yellow dots are day bursts and the blue dots are night bursts. And you can see they all vary in size and the size scale is at the bottom. So as you can see, in these 10 years, these were the events that were reported. So how many events actually went unreported? So let's get up close and personal with some of these near-Earth objects. This is Comet 67P, Cheremyov Garajmenko. Try saying that when you've had a few cherry bees. Uh, this is a comet that was visited, visited by the Rosetta mission and it actually had a small lander called Philae that actually landed on it. Well, actually, more it crashed. But this comes around every so often and it comes quite close to Earth. This is asteroid 99942 Apothis. It is currently making its way back into the inner so solar system towards Earth. A space probe called Osiris Apex is due to rendezvous and observe Apothis as it makes its way back in towards the Sun in 2025. Osiris Apex may sound familiar. This spacecraft was originally Osiris Rex, a probe that visited an asteroid called Bennu, where it collected samples and returned them to Earth for studying and then reassigned to visit Apothis on its way back into the Sun. Asteroid 16217 Ryugu. This is an asteroid that was visited by a Japanese probe called Hayabusa. This was also a sample return mission and the samples were returned to Earth safely. It was found to be, like Bennu, a pile, loose pile of rubble, rather than a solid object. And we need to know these sort of things so we can work out what sort of defences is best to use. And here is asteroid 101955 Bennu. As I said earlier, it was visited by a probe called Osiris Rex, which collected samples that would return to Earth. And as like Ryugu, it is just found to be a loose pile of rubble rather than a solid object. But it can still cause a lot of damage if it actually came towards Earth. The future of near-Earth objects research and exploration. Dedicated missions to study near-Earth objects. Missions such as NASA's OSIRIS-REx mission to asteroid Bennu return samples to Earth and now redirected to visit asteroid Apothis, OSIRIS Apex. Lucy mission to study Jupiter's Trojan asteroids. Resource potential. Near-Earth objects as potential sources of valuable resources like water and metals, i.e. psych. International collaboration, global efforts to track, characterize and potentially mitigate near-earth object threats. Conclusion, living in harmony with the cosmos. Near-Earth objects and potential hazardous objects are fascinating celestial objects that remind us of our place in the vast universe. While some pose a potential threat, we are actively researching and developing technologies to protect our planet. By understanding near-Earth objects, we can not only safeguard our future, but also unlock the secrets of the solar system and beyond. Not only must we be aware of near-Earth objects that are within the solar system, 
we must be also alert and aware of objects that visit to us from interplanetary space. This artist's impression is of an asteroid called a Muamua. And as you can see by the diagram of the trajectory, it came at us from behind the sun. So we didn't actually detect its presence in the solar system until after it had passed us. As it moved away, it seemed to increase in speed. And this made some to conjecture that this was possibly a piece of alien technology. Well, make of that what you will. But, as I said, we must be aware of things that come from interplanetary space. They can come at us from all directions, so we must be alert and ready. Not all near-Earth objects are natural. Some are man-made. Here you see two images of one of object 2018AV2 and object J002E3. Now both of these are man-made and they've been on orbits around the Sun and have been detected coming back towards Earth. The first, 2018 AV2, is believed to be Snoopy, which was the Apollo 10 lunar lander, which was used as a rehearsal and then ejected out into a, into a solar orbit. Also, object J002E3 was, was monitored coming back towards Earth. At first it was unknown, but using spectroscopic analysis, they were able to determine that it is the third stage of Apollo 12, which again was ejected out into a solar orbit and is making its way back towards Earth. So it's not just natural asteroids we have to look out for, it's also man-made ones. Well, I hope you enjoyed this, and I hope to speak to you soon. Take care for now. Bye.